Okay, welcome everyone. Thanks for coming by. It's Chris Petrie. We're having a great time today. We're doing some uh, beautiful uh, landscape style paintings. Um, this one here we're going to do is a, an oriental eastern style um, architecture um, of a temple uh, here or a home. So we have an Asian style um, uh, building here. And then we have like a garden and, and a pond in the foreground. So we're having fun doing a, something a little different. We don't always do um, paintings that maybe are, are from architecture from different parts of the world, but maybe we're going to start to branch out a little bit and do some architecture and different paintings from different parts of the world, just so we kind of mix things up a little bit. We kind of, uh, we do a lot of different, um, subject matter here, flowers, seascapes, landscapes, cityscapes. We do figure painting and when we're doing our, uh, landscape paintings and cityscape paintings, maybe we can also start to branch out and just do different parts of the world, maybe, um, some themes on maybe um, doing the east uh, eastern part of the world, uh, maybe do some more things in the west uh, over on this side of the uh, globe. So we're going to kind of branch out and do some more uh, interesting things in the future as we go ahead here. Um, so I'm hoping you'll enjoy this. This is more of a um, Asian style painting and uh, we have plenty of uh, interesting techniques here. This is the glazing technique. So you're going to learn all about the glazing technique on this video. So if you stay tuned, you will see that the glazing technique is really fun. Um, not too difficult to, um, uh, do. It's just a matter of, uh, letting things dry in between your glazings and we'll show you how to do again, everything here. And, um, we'll get started in just a second. We'll start our pencil drawing and you'll see how we develop the whole painting from start to finish. And if you're brand new, brand new here and you haven't ever been to my channel before, I want to say thank you for coming by. Welcome. And uh, we'll see um, if uh, you might be interested in doing watercolor. We have the Extreme Beginner series, which you'll just type in Extreme Beginners and you type in my name, Chris Petrie, and you'll see all the videos there of Extreme Beginner style, where you can learn the very, very basics of what supplies to buy, what paper, what brushes to buy. Uh, that are going to be inexpensive, so you can just start out with fun and not spend a lot of money. And then if you're really into it a year from now or two, you might spend some more money on some better brushes here and there. But for the most part, you'll get started and having a good time with this. And we'll share all those things on the Extreme Beginner series that we do uh, on a weekly basis. And then we're also doing our more advanced, uh, you know, series of paintings as we go each week too, where it's more of um, people that have more experience with watercolor and have been painting a while. So that's always a good thing, too, to cover those um, paintings of people that have, you know, spent a, lo a long time painting already, years and years. And so we're doing those style as well as the beginner series. So have fun with this. Um, we'll see you in just a second and we'll start our pencil drawing. OK. OK, we're starting back up again. Let's uh, just take a second to... Um, think about our colors that we're going to use here in this painting. We're doing like an oriental style painting with, with a temple, uh, beautiful uh, eastern architecture. So uh, I think the first thing we'll do is it's going to be a lot of uh, greens. We're going to mix a lot of greens. There's a, there's a beautiful um, grass in the foreground here and there's a uh, pond which is kind of has a green uh, color to it. And there's some other colors, maybe some reds and pinks here and there for some flowers and things like that. But for the most part, it does have a lot of green in the foreground here. There's green trees in the background up here. Um, I think this is a good glazing technique painting. So I think we can kind of get a maybe an overall wash um, to maybe uh, make things look uh, unified to start with. Um, Maybe I'll just zoom in to make sure I have a good, okay, I have a good focus on that. I just want to zoom in, make sure I have my camera focused. So I'm going to use basically maybe three or four brushes, I would say. This is a larger 14 Da Vinci Maestro round, Kalinsky, Kalinsky Sable round brush. And then I have a travel brush number four by Da Vinci. And then a, um, we have also a, a number six Raphael round brush, a watercolor brush. 
and then we have a uh, rigger brush, a needlepoint brush. So I think that's the, our brushes that we use for the most part. We'll get a large wash on here to start with. Maybe, let's see if we can do, uh, maybe like we're going to do a lot of green. So let, I'm going to use like a lizard and crimson and maybe some rose matter to get just like a really good uh, undercoating. For the sky, I'm going to add a little bit of orange and a little bit of blue. So let me just take a little bit of orange up here and a little bit of, um, I'll rinse off my brush. And then of course I always say next to my water container I have a small sponge and I tap off a little bit of water. After I rinse my brush, I rinse the brush, tap off the water on a sponge a little bit, and then I go in and mix my colors. And um, that tends to really work good. Sometimes you'll notice uh, if you have too much water on your brush and then you start going into all your paints and your wells of your palette, it'll wind up, you'll get a lot of excess water in your um, palette and in your wells, your paint wells. So I think the key to that is if you just, again, you rinse your brush off and always have a habit of just dabbing a quick dab once on your sponge to take off that excess water, then you can go in here, get your paints, and then whatever you're doing, you can always go back and get more water and add it into your palette uh, mixing area versus having too much water flooding into your palette and your colors. Then it really sort of, you, you could easily lose track of your rich colors that you want to have in your paintings. So that's why I do that. I learned that a long time ago. Really a helpful thing to know. So again, alizarin crimson, rose matter. Um, we have orange up here for our sky. We're going to do a little bit of orange in the sky and we're going to also do a little bit of blue in the sky. We'll go with maybe some cobalt blue up here and some cerulean blue. So some cerulean and some cobalt blue for our sky wash. So I kind of get everything out there that I need to on my first um, wash. I'm not going to go and flood the paper with tons of water because really it's not necessary and that's not really the look that we're going for here. We're just going to go for an under an under glazing. So we're doing our first glazing now, just getting some preliminary color in there. And um, so I'll just take that pink and reddish color and just get it on with some water. So it's a good wash. It's not, not, not flooding the paper, but then again, too, I am adding some water here and there. And I'm just, you can, you can put this on haphazardly. You can do some X strokes, you know, you can do these. You can just do some straights and some cross hatching just to get the overall paper covered with that, that light wash like so. And you'll notice this will really be helpful when we go to do our greens over the top with our second glazing. So there we go. We have that. Then we said we wanted to do some orange up here in the sky. So I'll use some cadmium orange in the sky over here. There's a lot of trees in the background here, but still we will have some orange up there. And then let's get some of that orange in, in here too, just here and there a little bit. So it kind of, the whole painting has that same flow and feel and unified color. And then up here, some of the blue. Notice I just put a little bit of blue up in the top area. And then a little more um, cerulean blue, cobalt blue. And we'll put some here too, just again, so we have sort of the unifying color throughout this. And that's it. That's your first wash, your first glazing. Again, we're doing the glazing technique for our painting portion here. So we have everything covered really well. But uh, notice we didn't flood the paper with a ton of water. We just made a, you can see the consistency of the wash here. It's a very light wash with more water and less paint versus if 
we want to just kind of make a comparison. Our next wash that we go over the top on this glazing, once it's dry, we're going to be using more, we're going to be using a lot of greens, but you'll see that it's going to be darker and thicker paint. So I'll be picking up some blues and greens and some olive green. And now you can kind of see how that's thicker paint, correct? Can you see that? Much thicker paint, not like here. So the first glazing is very watery. Not as much paint, more water, like that. And then our second glazing when we start working is going to be like this. It's thicker paint, not as much water. So that's the key. But we have to let this dry, so let's do that. Let this, let's let this dry 100% of the way, and then we'll come back over and we'll start doing our glazings over the top, our secondary washes. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, so we let this dry. We're, we're back again and we're just discussing now. We've let this dry. It's maybe a little bit damp. It's about a half an hour we let this sit. So there is a little bit of dampness to this, but it's not um, very, very wet where we can start adding in some washes. So let's start getting some more sap green on the palette, some olive green. Maybe we'll put in some raw umber too to start making some more uh, golden color washes here. So we'll use some of that. So we're going to make lots of different varieties of blues and greens. Okay, so and we'll use some burnt umber too for some more of our greens, warmer greens. A little bit of French ultramarine blue, so we're going to have some darker greens, some lighter greens. Alright, let's stick with the approach. We want to have our lighter washes maybe in the background with our trees in the background. We're not going to go with maybe tremendously uh, dark tonal values. We're going to keep these kind of light, maybe a little more blue. Let's add a little more blue to these. And I'm sort of making these trees a little uh, mysterious. I'm going to splash on some paint here and there. So I use cobalt and cerulean mixed with the green. And I'm trying to go for more of a cooler green because this is the background colors. The trees are in the background. I'm painting around the top of the around the top of the uh, temple and I'm splashing a little more just to get some more so this is just more subtle back here more cooler the blue you know more of blue And I'm painting around the, the roof area, and this is, sometimes I'll take my brush and do a little change in the way I hold my brush so I can get more of a, it just tends to help me get a little more of a tree shape if I hold the brush a little differently. And more cerulean blue mixed in with a little green. Again, we're going for that cooler look back there and then you can we can leave some we can do some darker greens with some burnt umber and cerulean blue uh, and also a uh, French ultramarine blue and we can do some some branches and tree trunks back here and again let's have a fun time with this um, a couple indications here and there
and you can see this is more um, we're just doing some loose kind of you know gestures or, or um, marks on the paper just to sort of keep things you know realistic somewhat but we're not making too much attention back here on the uh, back behind the temple area It's a fun painting to do. And then I make a lighter wash too here. I don't use as much thicker paint like that. I'm using a thinner paint here just to get some hills in the back. Like so. And then we can even do some more hills beyond that, behind those, if we want. Once this dries, we have to let it dry though. And you can even go in with a number four brush, a smaller brush here, and get in some more, maybe a few more details if you like, just some more sharper detail on some of the tops of the trees. Like that, but I think that looks good. So we'll let that kind of, we'll let this kind of set up and, and dry a little bit, the tree areas. And um, I think we're going to leave the pinkish color, the main colors of the, the building, the temple. And we will do more detail to the trim on the temple, so we'll do some of that. But we're not going to do that right at this moment. Let's keep working our our greens here. So now we're going to start getting into some more darker and I'm not going to really get too I'm going to try to get some of the darker portions of the bushes under here like so and then I rinse off my brush. Maybe we have some of those lighter. Tones. And then some of the darker tones underneath. And the sunlight's pretty much coming from the top overhead, shining almost straight down on the scene. So there's not many shadows going left or right or forwards or backwards. If anything, the shadows are a little bit coming this way just maybe a little bit but not that much really so the and I'm going to actually add some of the add some of these colors over here just so it unifies the top and bottom portion of the painting. So if I take a little of these bit of colors here and move them up here just a little bit so you can kind of see I if I do that and a couple splashes then it all is in harmony the colors but these are lighter uh, or bluer in color because they're in the distance of the painting the back the far background and then here up closer, there are warmer greens with more golds. And that's for, um, for more of a feeling of it's closer to us. And we're not 
not going to try to get too I'm using some chrom chromium of oxide which I'm going to start to put in here and there too as well as here again if I'm using chromium oxide in this lake or pond And I want to add it a few spots over here too. And we're just going to get a good washing of the, the pond here. Like so. And some sap green. Burn umber, sap green, a little bit of the chromium of oxide, and we'll just then we'll take some French ultramarine blue and mix that in too. We're going to have a little bit of a we have a little bit of a um, rock wall that goes along here, like that, and then it's over here as well too. Okay, so that rock wall is there where the pond is. And then we have some rocks over here. Different things. And I'm just trying to mix out some colors here just to kind of a little bit of cerulean blue. Maybe more of a rock, grayish rock color. And I can also bring back into, into some of the color the uh, alizarin crimson. And mix some of the dark over here. And you can sharpen up some of these colors. some of these shapes when once this dries up dries a little bit this way we want to okay and then when you start to see some things like that happening where your paints are starting to blossom and get a little bit of out of control that's the time when you want to kind of move to a different section of the painting so we'll move away from this area here because we just put a lot of water here and paint in this pond area so we don't want to ruin that and start having all things cauliflower and blossom and bloom into other sections it's happening here a little bit we can take a tissue while it's still damp and just lift that up a little bit so you see I just lift that up a little bit that's okay and we can go over here and do some and I'm trying to use my larger brush here the most the most of the time and we're not gonna we're gonna do some detail work too we'll do some tree tree limbs and things and branches and tree trunks and up here for this tree and but I guess the main thing is let's kind of let this work for us let's let's not overly think things too much let's kind of let some things happen here with just paint get some washes on we can go over with details later. Leave some white paper here and there. OK, 
Okay. There's some stonework there, so I'm going to take some blue, cobalt blue, and we're going to make a little bit of a cooler feel over here. And then maybe we'll do some, the steps are kind of stone, so let's put the steps in like that. I think we're really starting to see some good progress here with the painting. We have a lot of wash on the paper. It's looking good. And I think we're going to let this start to dry now. Let's let this dry a bit. And we have some blue. We have blue up here, some blue in the trees to make these look cooler in the distance. We have some blue over here, some stonework on the bottom of the temple area. And also, too, we just put some blue down in here. <clears throat> okay, this is really a fine point to take a break and let this start to dry a little bit and then we're going to come back in and we'll do the details of the temple and we'll do some tree shapes and things. I think leaving a little bit of white paper here and there um, kind of adds to the feeling of light in the painting so I'm not going to paint over everything. You can see I left some white paint here and there and you can also see some pencil marks on the paper. I leave those in there, that doesn't matter. We drew what we saw in our reference photo. My reference photo is um, probably copyrighted so I really can't have that on camera, um, but you can work from this finished painting once I'm done, that's fine. And we're going to again take a break and we'll come back and we'll finish up the details of the temple and um, I think we'll be uh, good to go. Okay, so we're getting back and we're going to start doing our details here. Um, we can kind of see this has dried a little bit. I, I stepped away for about 15, 20 minutes and I noticed it's, it's dried pretty much. You know, um, it's, a, it's damp in different spots, but it's somewhat dry. And um, you can always do a blow dryer uh, on top of the painting a little bit too to, to make it uh, dry a little quicker. That's also another method we use all the time on my channel here. You'll notice we occasionally will come back uh, after just blow drying it for five minutes. We'll come back and start working again. So it's up to you. Um, you know, to um, if you if you want to take a break for an hour or two, you'll notice you'll come back and it'll be dry enough to start painting on again. But again, the key to glazing technique is you want to let the glazings dry as you go. So our first glazing, you know, we did the pink and the orange and blue in the sky and the pink washes and the blue and green. Very light washes over the whole first uh, glazing of the painting and then we let that dry completely. And then we started going over the top again with our trees in the background here and then we started working into the foreground here where we have a pond and some trees and bushes and things a little uh, garden here a pond a water feature and some a garden area so we will get more details as we go um, in this area but not too many because I think this is a good painting just to leave more simple not get too many details kind of get you know we've got the good the good amount of sort of medium tones on the paper now so we have and then we have some darks here this rock wall is pretty dark and we have some darks here little bits of dark uh, for the tree trunks and some of the tree branches and things so that's good and um, we don't we want we want to keep our darks in this painting sparingly we don't want to use too many darks just a few here and there is going to look good and the rest of the paintings is going to be more middle tones uh, so let's start again by doing some shadowing and I use, I'm going to use my six Raphael brush here, watercolor brush, and then I'm going to add some alizarin crimson to this mix here. There are some beautiful reddish colors here on the under, uh, the soffits of the, the temple area, under the roof area. 
So I'll get those in, and those are kind of dark. We could add some blue to that to make it a purple. Add some brown down here too, so we have some different color modulations. And then there's some darker blue, French ultramarine. But I, it seems like that's the... Here, and you can always... Sometimes I'll switch over to a um, the number four here brush. So that I can even get more control with this window. We're doing a, a window up, up here on the temple. This could be also a uh, open air balcony. Like that. And then we can let some of this tie into that there. And there's some more of that bluish color going across here. So now you're seeing I'm shifting into more of the details of the temple, trying to um, make sure I I want to use some of the same colors. We'll try to get the sunlight here. So I'm going to do the shadow here across. that then I'm going to use more green with some of that blue mixture and some of the red too there's still more of that red color that goes along here and I can just sort of get some of that shadowy color there underneath the soffits under this side here and there's more darker like that and then let's So I'm just going to start to get some of the, there's, there's trim on this, this face of the building. So I'm trying to get that, but I don't want to go too, I don't want to go too, I guess what I'm thinking is I don't want to sit here and really get out rulers and and really get so fancy and de detailed that it kind of just if we can just get some of the basics here overall we'll be fine so I'm just going to do minimal details if I can And then some quick like that, and then the door doorway is more detailed, even yet, more trim there. Blue again. 
Maybe a little green mixed in with that blue. Maybe some... Picking up some of the colors of the... The greens, the grasses, the bushes, the trees. And the same here. And there's some shadows here. So I'm going to try to mix up some more of that shadow color. It was kind of a purple. Then there's some green in it too. Over here. And then over here too there's some more shadow color. That's probably from the trees a little bit. Same over here. There's some shadow colors over here. And uh, if, if you lose a couple spots, no big deal. I thought I had a roof over here that I kind of, I painted over with the trees by just that happened, you know, no big deal. We, uh, sometimes when we're painting, we have some good washes happening and then we we don't see that it might have went over a spot but we don't 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 worry about it I wouldn't add anything or delete anything there I would just leave it as it is and then I'm gonna do the same thing here I'm gonna keep adding my details as I drew them in there's more details here too like that and uh, that's pretty good. We got that there. I'll just mix up some darker spots here just to have. And again, I don't want to go too I think leaving things a little bit underdone is going to be better. So I think we are looking good here. I think we have some orange, orangey kind of a color over here. And then there's some darker shadows over here like that. And then sometimes you'll notice you need to add a little bit of a darker wash to an area, like under there. So I would go with more of a um, purple, like that, alizarin crimson and French ultramarine blue. I think that looks better, like that. And I think this looks pretty good. Um, there's a few more things here. We have the um, some cerulean blue. There's a couple windows here. There's probably a shadow under this roof here. We have to let these windows dry though before we do that. So let's leave those dry. There's also some more I grade that down a little bit with some burnt umber. And we have some more trim here. And some there too. And then maybe we'll 
we'll do that shadow up here. And there's a shadow there. And there too. And then we could do a shadow like that. And we can darken this up here a little bit. Okay, so we kind of have a really good overall look now. Not too much details. You can make a little bit of a darker purple with French ultramarine blue and uh, lizard and crimson. And you can get a little bit of a darker dark under there like that. Under these uh, roof areas. That looks good to do that. And then I think just a few details maybe with our, um, let's go with these same purple colors, add in some brown and green. Maybe uh, more burnt umber there and we'll do some, and also some cobalt blue. We'll try to get in our, some tree trunks here. So we're going to do a couple So we're going to do a couple of tree trunks. So I'll do one over here. There was a tree here that we did in the painting. So what I'll do is I'll get the thicker branches in with this here. With this smaller number four brush. We'll get in the thicker. Um, thicker. And I'm also going to take this brush and make even a larger. Like this and I know you might be thinking whoa but I'm telling I'm saying right now um, this really doing this kind of like it makes it more interesting And we're just going to leave it like that with not too much detail but it kind of feels like we can splash on some paint here and there a little bit and we can also use our needlepoint brush to get some branches in here but that's what I wanted to do was just add more depth to the painting to make it look very interesting like it's has a lot of depth and um, three-dimensional quality to it. So if we add these if we add these trees in here in the foreground like so and it adds a, a little bit of mystery to the painting if we make the tree in front like we did here it, it's almost like we're walking through the garden and we can see the temple um, up here and we are going to splash on a little bit of paint for some of the branches so I hope you'll see that we're going to do that next just after we have and that's I think that's good Okay, now we'll take our um, Kolinsky Sable Raphael brush <clears throat> and we're going to take some titanium white um, and just mix a little bit. I'm going to clean up a spot here on the, on the palette. 
So I just want to make sure I don't have too much. We'll add a little yellow ochre to the titanium white, but you'll see what we're going to do here. We're going to take some, I'm going to uh, clean, uh, get fresh clean water in my uh, paint bucket. Then I'm going to take some of that water, put it onto the palette here, and then just add some titanium white like this. Get a good wash like that. There was a little bit of leftover yellow ochre, so that looks good. I don't think I need to add any. And I'm just going to do a couple splashes for the trees. Maybe this is like springtime. So you can have, we're going to have some of those. Let's do some, maybe some pink. Let's do some uh, alizarin crimson mixed in with that. And just add some of that in. And it looks great because we use the alizarin crimson in this, all the underwash. So when you do that, you use an underwash like that with a couple colors especially, um, you can do this. You can add this, these splashes like this and they're going to mellow out and soften out. Right now they look a little bit like, you know, you can just tap on a few to smooth them out, make them a little less, um, you know, it gives it variety, right? Variety is always great. Variety is uh, fantastic in watercolor. So if you tap on a few of those, not all of them, but if you tap on a few of those, it relaxes them. It makes them look, look a little more mellow. You can even take some fresh, clean water and do a couple of just splashes of water on each of those areas here and there. Not everywhere, just a few. And I think that's really fine. I think this painting is great. Looks good. And all we have to do now is we will... Um, We'll remove the tape just so we can kind of see how it looks like if it's framed, if we have it framed. I don't have a mat right now, a, a pre-cut mat with me, but you can kind of see that it looks much better once we remove, remove the tape. It gives it a natural border. We could zoom out a little bit. Like that. But I think that looks really good. It gives it, you know... Everything just kind of harmonizes with the washes that we did. Remember, we did the light wash of alizarin crimson over the entire painting. We let that dry. Of course, this is the glazing technique. Then once that dried, we came back over and started doing our greens and blues in the background with our trees. And then we did our foreground with more warmer greens. We added more gold colors, umbers, and um, some uh, bur burnt umber into our green mixes so that we have more of a warmer looking... Uh, green washes for the foreground here closest to us and the pond. We added some chromium of oxide to give it that kind of um, that green pond look with the murky water and then we just finished up with our details putting in some trees, some branches, tree trunks and then we do our final details with our temple doing our trim and the walls and windows of the temple and then, of course, the finishing uh, touches we did with the trees here um, to uh, just add those extra details to the painting. And then also, it kind of makes everything look more three-dimensional. It makes the temple more mysterious where it's far off in the distance because we have this tree here in the center, or, you know, roughly center of the painting, a little bit off-center, and some other areas here. And there's the gardens and the bushes, and it kind of just all works, flows nice. I, we didn't spend tremendous hours on this. We just kind of worked our plan as we went. So I'm hoping you'll try this painting, have fun with it, enjoy it. It's a little bit of a different architecture than we might normally draw, but it's always fun to try different things. So I'm hoping you're going to do that. Branch out and try some different um, pictures and paintings. Always uh, maybe uh, have some uh, interest in doing something a little bit offbeat once in a while and different so that, uh, you know, it just makes your paintings a little more interesting and, and you learn some new things about different architecture, let's say, on this painting. We, we did some different architecture. But um, I'm glad you're here. And I always want to mention, too, if you like these videos, please subscribe below on the right-hand side. Um, so if you're brand new here, you know, again, welcome. And, and also, if you're considering painting, we have the Extreme Beginner Series, which is... Um, um, more or less when you're just starting out and you've never painted before, we cover all the basic fundamentals of watercolor. Um, 
I have a new, uh, numerous a Extreme Beginner videos where I explain the brushes to buy and the paints to buy, which are less expensive and they're kind of like starter um, type supplies that you'll need. So you can look all those videos up on my previous um, videos on, on my channel and just have fun with it, enjoy. You can do as renditions of this in smaller sizes. You can make smaller 5x7 paintings like this. You can make this even lar enlarge this and do this like in an 18x24 or a 24x36 size. You can turn the painting and make it more of a um, landscape style. I did this in a portrait style where the rectangle is going, uh, you know, our rectangle is sitting vertical, but you can also do this in a landscape. Probably would look really good in the landscape um, orientation too as well. Okay, all right, so we're gonna we're gonna wrap up for this uh, video. Thanks again for stopping by and painting with us, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye bye.